in the annals of the Old West amid legends of notorious gunmen and outlaws, there exists a little-known figure whose story is both intriguing and mysterious. Henry Newton Brown, a man of quiet demeanor, emerges as a charming figure in the tale of the Wild West. In this video, we dive into the life of Henry Newton Brown, uncovering the mystery of the shy outlaw and his remarkable relationship with the infamous Billy the Kid. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Henry Newton Brown, born 1857, was an American gunman in the Old West who took on dual roles as lawman and outlaw during his infamous life. Brown, orphaned at a young age, grew up in the town of Cold Springs in Phelps County, Missouri, where he lived with his uncle Jasper and aunt, Aldamira Richardson. However, at the age of 17, Brown began a journey, leaving the home he had been attached to since childhood. Adventuring to the Great West, Brown found work as a cowboy in Colorado and Texas, where he killed a man in a gunfight in the Texas Panhandle. In 1877, Henry Newton Brown was in the vast New Mexico Territory, where he was embroiled in the Lincoln County War. Joining forces with Billy the Kid and the Cowboys as the Regulators, working on John Tunstall's Rio Feliz Ranch. The events of chaos quickly unfolded when on April 1, 1878, Brown, along with Billy the Kid, Jim French, Frank McNabb, John Middleton, and Fred Waite, conducted an ambush, led to the murder of Lincoln County Sheriff William Brady. Brady's direct involvement in Tunstall's death was the cause of this violent act. Just three days later, in Blazer's Mill gunfight, Brown and his associates engaged in a fierce gunfight with Buckshot Roberts, a man they believed was involved in the murder of Tunstall. Roberts was shot by Charlie Bowder. Later, Roberts shot and killed Richard M. Brewer, the leader of the Regulators. Finding refuge in the Blazer owner's office, Roberts continued a gunfight with Brown and the Regulators, eventually succumbing to his wounds and dying the next day. After the murder of Sheriff Brady, the Lincoln County Regulators, now fugitives, sought refuge for the next few months. Then on July 15, 1878, they, along with one of Tunstall's partners, Alexander McSween were cornered by members of the House and Brady's faction at McSween's house. Henry Brown was one of three regulators who weren't actually at the McSween house at the time. He took a strategic position at a grain depot behind the Tunstall store, taking part in attacks against Brady's men. When the besiegers set the house on fire, Brown, Billy the Kid, and the others managed to escape from the house. Tragically, as they fled the flames, McSween was shot down, and his death essentially marked the end of the Lincoln County War. In the fall of that same year, Henry Brown, along with Billy the Kid and several other members of the Regulators, drove a herd of stolen horses to the small town of Tuscosa in the Texas Panhandle. After a successful horse sale, the members of the Regulators returned to their familiar places. However, Brown, who was named on two murder warrants from New Mexico, wisely chose to stay in Texas. His exact occupation during this time remains uncertain, whether it was deputy sheriff in Oldham County, field marshal of Tuscosa, or a police officer. Known for his short temper, Brown was quickly fired due to his belligerent nature. He then drifted through Indian Territory and eventually made his way to Kansas, where he took jobs on farms. In July 1882, Brown settled in Caldwell, Kansas, an emerging cattle town similar to Dodge City and Abilene. Initially appointed to the city's assistant marshal, Brown's dedication and efficiency led to a rapid rise, becoming marshal of the town just five months later. Brown joins forces with lawman Ben Wheeler, currently serving as assistant marshal, to embark on a mission to restore law and order to the town successfully cleaning up the streets. In 1883, a notable incident occurred on the streets of Caldwell when Henry Brown quickly took down two outlaws. The local newspaper, the Caldwell Post, proudly declared Brown 
one of the most agile shooters in the entire Southwest. To show their admiration, the townspeople presented him with a brand new, finely carved Winchester rifle. Later, Brown received further acclaim from Caldwell Commercial, which hailed him as cool, courageous, and gentlemanly, and free from vices. In the early spring days of 1884, Brown surprised the community by marrying a local woman, then buying a house and carefully furnishing it. It seems that he has found satisfaction and stability in life. Unbeknownst to the residents of Caldwell, however, Brown was saddled with mounting debts, living beyond his means in a precarious financial situation. Despite leaving behind his former life as an outlaw, Henry Brown, along with his deputy Ben Wheeler and two other former outlaw friends named William Smith and John Wesley, planned a bank robbery in Medicine Lodge, Kansas. Cleverly disguised as lawmen in their quest to catch a fugitive in Oklahoma, they depart from Caldwell and meet two more robbers before arriving at Medicine Lodge. On the morning of April 30th, 1884, shortly after the bank opened, they stormed inside, brandishing their weapons and demanding immediate cash. When bank president E.W. Payne reached for his gun, Brown quickly shot him dead. Treasurer George Geppert, raising his hand in surrender, also fell victim to Brown's shot. Before he died, however, Geppert made his last effort, staggered to the vault, and closed the door. Their ambitious bank robbery plan fa ended in failure as the group quickly mounted their horses and made a hasty escape, pursued relentlessly by an angry army right behind them. Just outside the town limits, the relentless pursuit drove them into a canyon, a fierce two-hour gunfight. In the end, the outlaws surrendered. Taken to Medicine Lodge, they were confronted by a mob calling for their execution with chants of hang them, hang them. While in custody, the outlaws were provided with meals and wrote letters to their families. Around 9 p.m., an angry mob burst into the prison, vehemently demanding the arrest of prisoners. The sheriff refused but was overwhelmed by the crowd, and the prison doors opened. Seizing the opportunities, the prisoners recklessly rushed out to escape. Tragically, in the midst of a chaotic crowd, Henry Brown was shot dead, his body covered with bullet holes. Wheeler was also wounded but was dragged with Wesley and Smith to a nearby elm tree and hanged. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.